Welcome back to the Film Alchemist Podcast, the show where we take the movies we love, break them apart, to find out what gives them their magic. I'm your host, born the month of June, but like 22 years ago, underneath the sun and the stars and the exploding hearts of planets. More than 22 years, but all right. Well, we don't got to do that. We get a cling to hope. I'm like one of those yes, old Amos. ladies at brunch. I'm just full of Diet Coke and hoping that no one will ask me my real age. Because <laughs> it's bad. Almost as bad as the world before I was born. <laughs> Dandino has gathered a cadre of of simple folk to bring gifts before me to honor my birth month. Of <laughs> All right. I thought it'd get better. I need more. I need Ooh, to like whiteboard yeah. this. This is a rough one. How'd you rough well, I'm this I'm trying all- to get a Skeletor vibe, and it's, it's not working. It's weird that you'd go, like, a second straight-up rough draft on this rather than rough draft Well, I'm busy. I'm fucking busy, and I got cool stuff to do, <laughs> and I drink a lot. Oh, okay. um, but yeah, anywho, it's my birthday month, and the theme this month is uh, my friends give me movie gifts. Agreed. And it's been really cool. I hope you enjoyed the Nacho Libre episode. But before today's Nacho. stellar episode for my friend and... Uh, Business partner Heath Benfield, not even business, my creative partner Heath Benfield. We have some business. Everyone, please go Hello. to our Patreon, patreon.com slash film alchemist pod. Please, if you could be so kind, help support the show, man. It means the world to uh, podcasts like us. It's, uh, it's a great way to get all the extra content you want. It's a great way to make yourself an author of the show, right? Huge Patreon exclusive library of uh, movies, commentaries. Mini series, all kinds of fun stuff. We're always working to grow that, make it better, make sure that it's worth the money of those who are kind enough to support us. So again, patreon.com slash filmalchemistpod, the best thing you can do for the pod. Some free things you can do. Uh, message your friends, man. Let them know what we're working on. You can leave ratings and reviews on every podcast app you find uh, the show. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Some kind words, some stars. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel, Film Alchemist, to see some video content we've got over there. You can follow our socials and share everything there, including now TikTok, where you can see clips uh, and uh, some special content we're making just for that audience. So if you'd be so kind, go over there and do all that. You can also give your pal Griffey a gift by checking out all of my work over at MisfitParade.net and Heath's, the friend who gave me this movie gift today. Mm-hmm. We're making our own movies. Uh, our movie Sugar Tits is hitting the festival circuit right now. So there's a chance that Misfit Parade will be in a town near you soon. So go to MisfitParade.net, sign up, uh, follow everything over there. We'd appreciate it. Also, your boy is doing some work for Looper. Uh, so you can go find me on all of Looper's many social media channels and their YouTube channel. Uh, doing videos about all kinds of movie-related stuff. And I would appreciate the love and support over there. That's it. No more business. It's time to slather me and, up in gifts and praise. And no? then there's Alex. Alex. Uh, oh, stop it. I Alex have, is working on a comic book right now. We Don't have worry. a... You don't know what I'm working on. Anyway, we have exactly a lovely birthday gift for you today. Um, from, yes, our friend Heath Benfield. He of Misfit Parade fame. Award-winning director. Award-winning director of, of Misfit, Misfit Parade, Parade by the way. Yeah, I was, was going to follow it up. I texted Heath. I was like, hey, dude, I need a, I need a birthday movie for Griffey. You know, tell me what you got. One, It was one text... Two words, Maniac Cop. No explanation, just Maniac Cop. And I was like, sweet, love that. Well, I think one of the things that Heath and I both love about Maniac Cop is that once you read those two words, there's so little explanation needed. You just you get it right away. And that and that is pretty much the summation of the 1988 slasher film is Maniac Cop. Need more explanation? No, no, I do not. That no, I get it. it. It's a cop who's a maniac. It's a cop and who's it's a maniac. Great. And it's wonderful. Yeah. So Heath and I talk about this movie a lot as a touchstone for kind of these like raw, energetic, independent level horror movies, right? Mm -hmm. And what Mm -hmm. are the elements of these movies that make them successful and that we can still garner today for our Misfit Parade movies, right? And this one's got the wonderful title. It's got an instantly recognizable kind of hook and idea that people are willing to turn on. One of the hardest things you battle today, making short films, podcasts, anything, is that Every fucking person is doing it. Like right. we know this as podcasters, everyone Everybody has makes a, a fucking pod. podcast. Everybody has a so movie pod. the difficulty in garnering this like big broad audience is hard. You've got to know exactly who your little niche audience is and catch them. Yes. So especially with films, right? If you make a film, right? Like you know, 
a pudding on Third Street or whatever the fuck, right? It's hard. It's mm-hmm. hard because everyone's like, what, what's Third Street? Why would I eat pudding there? You put a movie like Maniac Cop. That's something that people are like, well, I'll click on that one, right? Like, if you go to just Amazon, Apple Movies, any of the places where you can stream, go to Tubi, right? Look at how many fucking movies are coming out all, every fucking day. And that doesn't include the ones that aren't getting distributed, the ones that are self-distributed. Um, it's brutal out there. So finding these things, right, and going back to the classics like Maniac Cop, yep. what are the elements we can glean that still would work today? And I think I still think this movie is just a fucking fun, wild ride. And there's something, I don't know if you agree, there's something about this era of, like, New York gritty street movie I just don't think any other city ever got that era of movies that made it so iconic, and I love it. I'm I'm not sure I'd loop Maniac Cop in with like what I would consider like street level. Like this this part. This is what I'd say. Well, sure, it's the, not like you know of the greatest the Warriors, like New York obviously. City crime cop movies, but, but like, it is fucking is, cool. This is the thing, and I, 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 this is what I'll go with. To that point, the um the time period of when this movie was made, like probably like. 75 to literally 1990 new york actually was like a fucking cesspool like it was gross oh yeah i love uh, watching like old documentaries like old, about like old the 70s documentaries and movies <laughs> about like late 70s through like the entirety of the 80s new york is fucking horrifying because like you know if you've been there now i mean look i don't live Jesus, there but- i didn't realize maniac cop was 88 for some reason i thought that was 82 no nah, no nah, 88 man so this so, is past what I'm talking about that era of cinema. No, but but it, it's a throwback in that. But way. here's the thing: it's not really because New York fucking sucked for literally an entire decade. Like, I, look, I don't live obviously in New York, but I do have a, I have worked there a lot, and I have a lot of friends who are out there, and you know, everyone who is from New York, I don't know why, but there's like a huge cadre of people who are like, oh man. You just don't understand New York. It's just like its own animal. Like, hey, shut up. And secondly, like, there's, there's this very every strange big city thing. has cunty people like that. Like, LA yeah. has it to a lesser extent. Cause it's so much more transplant, but yeah, but LA annoying. still has it. I think the thing about New York is because of this era particularly, like eighty, like seventy, like seventy five to ninety, was this era in New York that just fucking sucked. Like, New York was so fucking dangerous and like. You know, like not only that, it was in the it was the uh, the AIDS to epidemic. To the point was where we starting. needed one man to save us, Rudy Giuliani. What? <laughs> like how I, bad were this? Things is getting? like well, and I think that's like the craziest <laughs> thing about like the entirety of the whole thing is Rudy Giuliani. Like we all, yeah, who's there's this an fucking entire squeege? There's an entire generation of kids, and this still fucking blows my mind. Like my kid is going to grow up. Like the story about Rudy Giuliani. Is that he's a fucking psychopath. Like, I don't know about you. When we were young, Rudy Giuliani being the mayor of New York before 9-11, he was, like, the cool mayor who, like... He was people, the man, yeah. He, people to hated... Our, to our dads. People hate... Like, yeah, my dad like. We didn't realize he was, like, he was the maniac guy. cop. We he's a re- fucking scumbag, but he's actually, yeah. He is the maniac cop, like, willing to, like, kill people. Like, I didn't know you were going to kill innocent people. Like, he was willing to kill innocent <laughs> people. It was fine. So, Alex... Had you seen Maniac Cop before? No. So this is the first time viewing for you. First time viewing, yeah. Hell yeah. So what did you think just right off the top? What were what was like your your kind of opening salvo on this film? I mean, the title gives it pretty much all the flavor you need. Like I, I again, I think it's no secret on these pods. I like exploitation movies. Like I think they're fun. And like, you know, hour twenty five minutes, I'm there. I'm sitting it's there. It's fucking I'm brisk. The movie. And it's it full of fast. images. I it's don't awesome. need a lot. I don't need a lot from it. It get, like it provides the entertainment I need, and the entertainment value I have is like asking stupid questions about a movie that would never answer that question. I think this is like the value of Maniac Cop is I am watching this movie entertained as hell, asking myself like stupid, stupid questions that this movie is never going to ask. Like, I wonder. What logic keeps the maniac cop alive after he's been shot ten times? They Is never explain. They never really explain. But that's the awesomeness of this movie is the explanation is so unnecessary. 
The so pull of cops to continue to shoot us and break our civil liberties. <laughs> it's they are infused with uh, another William Lustig classic. They are infused with Uncle Sam's lust for vengeance and suppression. Yeah, there's, it's like um, it, the, the spirit well, of patriotism. It is one of those things I always forget every time I watch it because I just assume he is a cop who comes back from the grave, right? So the story of Maniac Cop, this detective Matt Cardona, right? Who, as they say, was Matt a real Cordell. Cordell, yeah, shoot first and ask questions later kind of cop. And the other cops opine about him like he was a legend. He was a real throwback. And apparently he was just a huge piece of shit. Well, they try to make an example of him in the city government, essentially. They send him to Sing Sing, full of the... They Rorschach his ass, right? You're trapped in here with me. And come to find out, it doesn't go well. Uh, spoiler alert. It's the shady fucking coroner who's like, well, I'll save his life by kind of stitching him back together <laughs> and sending him back on the street to his crippled girlfriend who tried to kill herself after all this happened. And he continues to have superpowers... Um, there's one scene for sure where the undercover prostitute detective and Tom Atkins, they shoot him at least seven times in the chest and she claims she hits him in the head yeah. multiple times Yeah, and he does not go down. The last shot of the movie, he is fucking impaled by a ship's mass, <laughs> uh, as they go into the, the drink and his hand comes back. So he is supernatural supernatural but right? in a movie that claims the only thing that happened is that the surgeon just sewed him back what they what i think they're saying is that the smoldering ember of justice was in there because someone pronounced him dead and took him to that guy right well he right he, and then that he little that, that, that ember he just kind of like gave him a surface level because they say he's like yeah. we don't make him pretty for his relatives he just kind of slapped him back together and let him sneak right. so well so he basically I think that's got... the hint at supernatural yeah, well, you find out he basically got Wesleyed from the Princess Bride, and you're like, okay, so he's almost dead, but not quite yeah, dead. That's right. And that was that's the trick. He had a reason to come back, killing innocent women. He had yeah. a great reason. Well, he had he a killed, great reason he to come back. Everybody. He's like ter terrorizing New York. <laughs> I love Again. his things. He's like uh, the Ember of Justice as well. These criminals, I put them in jail, and they still got me. And the I, corrupt city government, you're like, yep, I'm following that storyline. Like, I hate government, yeah, too. Like, let's go. Absolutely. Like, the that corrupt makes government, I need revenge on them because they made a sacrificial lamb the, of me. The fine, killing fine, of fine. innocent And then women. all of a sudden, he's like, ooh, a lady's getting mugged. Let me fucking let me snap her slam her like neck. The Undertaker. And I was like, well, you're losing me, Matt. Now curious? I'm starting to see why you were in there and got punched full of holes, Matt. Well, that's that a sucks. curious thing you just <laughs> did there, Matthew. I'm not sure I agree with that. It, it's a very... The maniacness, <laughs> there's no pointing the maniac of the cop we have going on here. Yeah. He's just straight up maniac. It's kind of like when you're in the middle of a good a good F sash, right? <laughs> and all of a sudden your partner's like doing the thing. You're like, nice, nice, nice. And then they're like, hey, wait, I saw this on a video. I'm going to try a new move. No, no, yeah, no! Yeah. Like you're in the middle of, it's really good, like nice yeah. and sticky. And they're like, hey, by the way, cool. you're like, yeah. not cool. I like those adjectives. Let's go. Gross. So, like the streets of New York, the Dandino uh, bedroom is sticky. No, so, <laughs> the, yeah, like I spray paint, but, like I, I spray paint like gang gang signs on the on the windows, so I know like oh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, you tag Andrea when you guys are getting after. Well, I have I have I have my brother Polly do it first, so I you know, uh, I have a little oh, what? Oh, well, I have okay. some. Perf well, I my you brother's were saying like the old NWO, you were spray painting right on your wife. <laughs> I was like Jesus Christ. No, I have my Andy I have my brother I have my brother come over with this very special paint. Your brother's exotic as fuck. I bet he would be into that. Yeah, he, he if likes you're listening, to make my... Polly. Don't lie. What I say is like, Polly, make my make my bedroom look like the uh, like, look like the subway from 1978, Hell like yeah. the Warriors. Just shits you know? in the corner. Great. Yeah. Okay, but let's hone this in. <laughs> I think <laughs> the imagery of Maniac Cop is so beautifully expressed in the opening, right? Which is we're at a bar, we're following this lady. Uh, it's like a common theme that everyone seems to have about going to big cities. It's like, be careful. Like, we, I mean, I lived well, in LA for like 12 years. I'll tell you the truth. No Whatever. One, it's different for guys, but. It's different for men, but it doesn't matter, though. I got to say this. Like, I'm like too fat truly, to abduct. Like, it'd just be not worth the, like, sweat equity. Me too. I, I feel like that's often. Like, like yeah, guys, if they saw us, like, you know, waddling look, down the street, be, like, they're like, fair. we're going to need a bigger van. Okay, look. In both, the, both New York and LA, which are two pretty popular like oh people have been murdered walking alone at night metropolitan areas both cities i have drunkenly walking home by myself 
stupid idea. Like, like in New York, one t- one night in New York, I walked from Greenwich Village back up to the hotel I was staying at, which was in like like in broad the Broadway district. Yeah, there was about like, seventy. Look at this little Midwest emo. We could get his ass. It was maybe. about seventy five blocks. I was fucking hammered. And I was like, oh, I don't right, want to take a cab. I'm going to walk. And, and this Stupid. is why it works, though. Stupid. Because most of the audience who's watching a maniac cop does not live in one of these cities. Doesn't know so how fucking dangerous So you're immediately tapping into this like fear of like, you know, these not so flattering stereotypes. Mm-hmm. You know, the Italian guy taking out trash from his small, his little basement apartment. He's watching and not helping these two not white guys jump her. Okay. By the way, that might have been, that might have been my favorite. Like, because it really like. It's like the third line in the entire movie. It's like, officer, officer, she runs up to maniac cop. Officer, these two Puerto Rican guys. I'm not sure they're, you know, not sure their ethnicity was necessarily important. <laughs> it's not, it's not the right? maniac cop. It's just the woke cop. And he's like, oh, Jesus Christ. Whoa, Jesus. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I can't help you now. My God. Yeah. That's your problem. Man, I thought Matt Cordova had a quick shot. <laughs> Matt Cordell was a <laughs> trigger finger. My God. Really whipping around entire ethnicities at people. <laughs> That is the. They need to be like partners, like a buddy cop, the maniac yeah. cop and the woke cop. Maniac whoa, cop whoa, and woke whoa. cop. Whoa, whoa, who are you choking out? My God. What did she ever <laughs> but, do to you? But imagine that, like, she fights back. The, chore- the choreography of this movie is pretty awesome. It's actually an underrated feature of this movie, I think. But she, like, pushes off the thing. They fight. They're running. And then all of a sudden, the criminals are watching her as she's, Officer, thank God. This big, kind of imposing silhouette. Of yeah. justice will protect this lady. Right? Which, by the way, you fully come know. to find out, she's just like a police bar lady yeah. who like hangs out with them a lot. Okay, and she runs up to the cop and she just keeps going, officer, officer. And as soon as she gets close, she has this look of horror, gets this double, you know, uh, choke slam on yeah. the ground, and we watch the criminals react in horror as the silhouette <laughs> of the New York City police, who's supposed to protect her and get them in trouble. Right. Probably that they have feared and have been oppressed by. Right. Turns the switch and it's right at the top of the movie is this perfect little thesis for the movie we're going to get. It's, and what I would say is that Maniac Cop film. is a great example of cuz if you watch a lot of these kind of movies especially today, there are a lot of clever titles that then just have the worst fucking scripts. They don't they're, it's the kind of movie that I I, I don't hate on because you know I get it, it's a living. It's better than sure. working at you know a factory, but the job is is just to make as much stuff as possible that can try to like you know it's kind of pre algorithm right like the the cover on the in the movie store right well Peter yeah you want to like, get whatever people, these like clever you want to get somebody to buy you know someone needs to see the jacket for someone needs to see this the vhs sleeve yeah. for your movie and pick well, it it's up. that old like it was a real like hollywood thing when i was first getting there that everyone's like the title the title's like you know 70 percent of it the title will hook them and i was like well that's bullshit like no one got rock hard when they heard 310 to yuma like what are you talking about like it's not always the title do you think people it's just not- saw the title Forrest Gump and they're like, oh, oh, that'd be weird if they did. That's a specific think, kind of thing. But yeah, that's a very specific what I'm saying note. is a lot of the maniac cop kind of genre. It does not. I think maniac cop over delivers constantly. The story is engaging. I'm going to say the actors. Gonna, the cast is fucking great in this movie. It's a great cast. I'm going to say this. This is something that I thought was really fascinating on the first viewing. Because you say it over delivers, and I'm going to tell you right now, four minutes into the movie, I, I checked it. It's four minutes and two seconds, I think. Four minutes and two seconds into the movie is how long it takes to get to the actual movie. Because the lead up is a four minute um, credit <laughs> sequence of him just putting on his uniform. Getting the uniform up. We are, the, we are setting up the classic... You know, this is a man in uniform. Look and at I, how noble it is. Just I to immediately almost, disgrace it and drag it through the mud. I almost texted you. I was like, this better pay off. Because I'm going to tell you right now, four minutes of a, of a suit-up scene. Like, not even the Batmans it's did credits. this. You got to honor great. the workers up front. That's it fine. truly did. Like, I was like, okay, that actually works. Because, it, it, again, you don't expect a movie like Maniac Cop to be paced this well. That paces perfectly into the rest of the movie. Because the rest of the movie is like... Whoosh, Boom, gone. Like, yeah. it worked so it well. It's the only moment of just taking its time that Maniac Cop exists. Bizarrely, bizarrely. It is a weird t- opening. Bizarrely well-timed. It feels like that could have been when we did our dream sequence. 
Because this is the other thing. The movie does ask this question of, did we really think that Bruce Campbell's Jack did it? Like, are we just kind of spending our way? I don't know that we, I think we could have done the flashback stuff right off the top. And that's like an even better opening. Here's the sure. thing, though. I actually like saving the flashbacks because there is something about the movie that I think it it's something I don't appreciate every time. But I did on this viewing. I like the way that the maniac cop is not just a Jason Voorhees. That he is this kind of a little more humanistic, right? Sure. And the scene where we get the flashback, where we see him as this, you know, showering beefcake, just fucking fighting for his life and getting all gashed up. Yeah. Um, That happens because the maniac cop, like my dog, is sleeping in the back of a hollowed out car in trash, essentially, in his full uniform. Oh, 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 oh. And he's having like a dog dream where he relives his murder. Again... After seeing that, I have no idea why that means he's got to go choke out and kill all these women and old men. <laughs> um, just I, two people kissing at a light. I but think the, uh... I think that moment of him dreaming, because that's something that they really caught on with, like, Leatherface and Freddy as they went on. Sure. Is this kind of tortured soul stuck inside, which I don't know. I'm not sure I get the that The maniac from Cordell, cop has enough but... of that. But there are moments where you see, like, he's still living in this trauma, right? There is moments where, and I love the kills in this movie, right? Like yeah. the couple that's stopped at the light and he walks up and just gently taps the glass okay. with his stick. I could not And he stop waves laughing. him out. That is not the moves of a maniac. I I truly and legitimately like <laughs> I this is cause this is where I thought this was going, because these people who the, the stoplight couple, like they're doing everything wrong in the car. They're drinking. Yep. They're drinking. They're like they're open containering they're in the car. In a car, yeah, yeah. They're eightiesing in the car. You're like, okay, these kids are definitely going to get fucked with because they're breaking all the rules. And I was like, okay, cool, I get it now. Like the strong sense of justice is the maniac copness. So like anybody who's like fucking around, we're going to find out the bartender was like selling dope or something. Yeah, the like problem that. is that one came second after the lady who was just trying not to get well, mugged and raped. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like the the lady who got mugged, we're going to find out. Did she Tom Mac like, can say that she was essentially like a floozy, and that's why. Yeah, like. <laughs> That, that was, like so like i was like oh we're gonna find out she was like a doper like a dope seller or something like that and like yeah, yeah tom adkins or she was like, the rat yeah she's the one she's who set him a, up she was a bit of a slut and we're like all right cool well let's you know, you know how how weird it is but like that was enough in the early days of the war it's like ooh, a woman at a bar by herself Gross. late 80s a woman who's like <laughs> running a bar like oh well she clearly gets around i'm like okay that's a that's a choice you know we're well, that's the other. So, like that. What's couple, that slut like, shameless okay, woman for having a that job in the business? More of a but, classic, you know. like '80s kind of slasher couple, right? They're making out. They're about to finger at the light, just yeah. violating all the traffic laws. No seatbelts. All right, fine. Open containers. Like, all right, cool. I get these people. are definitely gonna sure. die. It's fine. Like, did that guy feel like he was gonna like you know have a bright future ahead of him? Probably not. Neither here nor there. This is the guy who was just the old man who. My favorite one is the guy who gets smothered in the concrete. Dude, that's and the then best. They just hard cut to them trying to jackhammer his face out. <laughs> that is like one of my favorite moments it's a great in cut. this entire That's a great movie. edit. I love that too. It's so fucking good. And it's just it's you know scary what I love about it, and it's, it's because degrading. In a re- it's it's what I like in a remake of this movie, that's the guy who's like talking on a cell phone, like on the speaker on the on the street. Oh, the and speaker like, phone talking. I don't I'll never get that. And that's yeah. the one where you're like, oh, man. And the cell phone's con- like, the butt of it's still out of the concrete. So it's like, Larry. Hello. Larry, Hello? what's going on? Larry. Hello? Larry. Hello. Yeah. Are we playing pickleball tomorrow like, or not, Larry? <laughs> and that's where you're like, oh, wow, Maniac Cop really is doing the world justice. Yeah. Like, is that's it, how you feel like. right? It, yeah, I don't know if the right? movie ever gets me to say, is he right? I'm going to tell you right now, like, the on movie paper, his never mission, right? makes me think that. But see, on paper, his mission of, like, I want revenge against corrupt City Hall, you're like, I guess, but you were but like, like a horrible cop, the and now you're killing is, innocents. Yeah. That's the, the problem. Movie, the movie if he wasn't does not like take if he a wasn't like anyway. a jackboot, like knee to the neck kind of cop. Like I would be like oh, okay, but he was like not a good like in terms of copping. He was like, dude, I just love beating people up. I just like, love right. shooting people without asking. I just questions. Love shooting people. Yeah. That <laughs> I love pulling the trigger and asking no questions. How fucking like, unfair that great. I'm getting poked in the shower because not I just great. love to fucking kill innocents. <laughs> As you can clearly see, that I come back from the dead still rock hard to murder innocents. This is the thing, though. The movie never tells us. I feel like it's a movie that wants to say 
You understand the cop, but you also can see that he's wrong. Right. But then almost every character they make a piece of shit. Like Jack just being like, honey, I tried the therapy. His what wife is asshole. clearly like mentally oh unwell. And he's just like, Bruce Campbell God, is bitch. such a dickhead. Like he is so mean to his wife. And he's like, Jesus Christ, I'm going to get you money for your therapy because you're a fucking loser. And like sort yourself out. And she's like, you know what? I'm going to follow his ass. And he immediately, he doesn't even, like, clock in or anything. He just walks straight to he the hotel. goes straight to that motel to bang out that undercover they bang. Also, by the way, no one who runs a CD motel like that is such a narc. There's no way a lady who's, like, on the verge of tears comes in. She's like, hey, I think my husband went into, like, 36C. He like, hey, sorry, lady. You're going to have to catch him on the way out. Like, this is, this is the Ashley Madison documentary rules. Like, yeah. you can't just fucking be... Like, the secrecy is a huge part of that industry. Yeah. You can't just give there's her a this, fucking key. There's this motel in Vegas that is, uh, I, I did a show about swingers, uh, like, way, like probably almost a decade ago. I did a show about swingers, and there's this motel in Vegas that has these unwritten rules. Yeah. Where basically, like, if you, if you leave your, um, if you leave the double doors to your room open, you, people just walk right in. You guys can get down. But that's, like, the bit. And it was the same thing here. I was like, this is one of those motels you go to fuck so no one can tell that you fuck Specifically, there. the captain's like, it's a seedy shitbag motel. So it's like, yeah, th- that's what they're there for. You oh don't let God, the jilted dude. lover in. Speaking of, okay, the, uh, the guy who plays uh, Bill Smith, William Smith, the guy, the guy who plays the captain, Captain Ripley. Jesus Christ, what a voice. What a I, voice. I, what like, a this voice. cast just is like, so good. He's wonderful. We got Richard Roundtree like as the commish. gargling hot asphalt voice. That's, oh, yeah. that's what I look for in like a bad like bad lieutenant type character. That's what I want. You know? Yeah, it's so good. I, I, I like that a lot. Crime and SIGs I, have taken their toll on I gotta, this one. I gotta say this though. I, there th- this is look, again, I don't besmirch any element of this movie because it's just doing what it's doing. But the mystery of whether or not Bruce Campbell did it. We had touched on this briefly before. I actually think this is a plot line you could leave entirely out of the movie and still have the exact same movie at the end. Like, well, makes, yeah, for sure. Because it's also like you're getting a little Bruce Campbell on my Tom Atkins, right? Like yeah, maybe, exactly. maybe like just kind of go with one. Yeah, I, I don't need, you know, exa- that's exactly what it is. Like, Because the, the Bruce not Campbell like, did he or did he do it, didn't do it really offers nothing it doesn't really it and by the end of the movie the thing net. they also don't really address i'm trying to remember because i didn't rewatch maniac cop too because it was late right uh there's still no evidence by the end of the movie that bruce campbell didn't just do all this shit with the undercover not. prostitute detective that they both just like are a hundred percent the one the the overall evidence in this movie is everyone believing that this cop is Detective quote Mallory, back from the dead. Idea. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. Like there's literally no evidence by the end of the film because they pull the truck out and there's no fucking maniac cop. There's just two cops that got caught in an affair and been, have been at the scene of multiple fucking crimes, like a yeah. lot of crimes, including this one. Now <laughs> it's, it's a real, like it's a real catch 22. If you ask me, they're like, well, yeah. there's a cop. And he's at the scene of the crime claiming another cop that we definitely know died. What they should have uh, done in that interrogation room is if you hear shit going down, don't open the door. Just start plowing immediately. Like Just way, be in okay. a scene of like repose to where they're like, well, you know, they were busy doing that. No one's going to interrupt that to go this hang up like, three police from the rafters. You have to match Maniac with Maniac. Right. I think they the problem. Ne- like when they left that and Bruce Campbell's like. Go outside. I'll run upstairs. You're like, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do don't that. Do You're that. not a hero. We just saw no. you cheat on your mentally. You are a uh, garbage person wife. and nothing. I think that, again, <laughs> the movie logic available is like, you're not going to make me think that Bruce, after the entire scene that Bruce Campbell basically just told his wife, he's like, I think you're crazy and I think we're pretty much headed for a divorce. I don't want to be with you yeah. anymore. Her like, mental state. Th- was very much like Nacho Libre's hut in the last movie. And he just walked up and kicked the last stick out and said, fuck you, it's your fault. Yeah. And there's, got caught Like, he cannot be a redeemable there's hero. No redeem- there's no redeeming that character. Period. The end. There's nothing. Yeah, I don't... So, when he gets, like, when he gets framed for but this stuff... But that's the thing. We already had Tom Atkins is, is Detective McCree who was rocking it. 
Okay, like, this is a Tom exactly. Adkins vehicle. That's what I'm saying. This should be the Tom Adkins movie. Yeah. To use your metaphor, like you got some, you got some Tom, Ad, you got some Bruce Campbell and a Tom Adkins. Like, yeah. There's times when like that mashed potatoes and peas mixed together combo works. Like, and if they had done like a two hander where like, yeah, because oh, it felt like they were about to start a midnight run with these. Yeah. Two. Ex- exactly. Yeah. And I was like, oh, cool. Okay, we're gonna do this, but instead, like. It just Tom Atkins gets chucked out of a window. We're like, no, no. After getting his ass beat by that old yeah, lady's Tom cane. Atkins gets his fucking ass kicked. She whips the dog shit out of him. <laughs> I mean, no, there's there's no like back and forth. He just gets. He's like, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna kick the shit out of you for five minutes of scream time, and then throw you out of a goddamn window. Yeah, You're like, I'm gonna whip. Yeah, and that's like, the other thing. Uh, what's his name? Uh, <laughs> is it Bruce Czar who plays the maniac cop? Yeah, Bruce Czar. Czar. Yeah, and he's just boom. He, I mean, he hits him on every single fucking file cabinet. Like, whatever file, like there were file cabinets. I don't think that were in the scene that he got hit on. Like yeah. he was like, we need more file. It was like chairs at a WWE <laughs> event. Yeah, just they're everywhere. <laughs> they're just like tossing. They're like tossing props towards him. Like I don't know. Yeah. Just Tom Atkins getting thrown out of the window. I still get pissed. I gotta every say time. this though, Tom Atkins. This is the this is the thing. I I love Tom Atkins. He just fits movies. the aesthetic but of the film so more than good. Bruce Campbell. I think what's crazy about Tom Atkins is, I know Tom Atkins knows his brand. Like he knows what movies he's in. Like I've never seen a movie where Tom Atkins does not understand the assignment. There's something about this performance, Tom Atkins. Once he's like really locked in, like the first couple of scenes, I'm like, okay, Tom Atkins is doing the Tom Atkins thing. There is like another gear he hits towards like the end of the first act into the second where he's doing a different movie where he's like doing a real like actual detective film. Yeah. Well, he's the only it's one like, who's like he, he he's doing answers. like another movie. It's pretty cool. Like he's a really yeah. again. He's just a really good actor. Well, he's I really actually love Tom Atkins. Robert Zadar. That's what I meant. Um, Not Bruce or whatever I said. Oh, but, sorry. I thought you said Robert Zadar. Yeah. Robert Zadar. Yeah. The thing is, is that he is the one who's actually looking for answers. He's kind of our Ellen Page in Inception, where he's just asking questions that tell us the things that should just be in the movie. Yeah. And everyone else is literally just turning the other cheek or running for their fucking lives the whole movie. Right. That's it. So no it's one else weird... in the cast has. an, And it's almost like they say, well, the doctor's got to give the next bit of information. We might as well just fucking. Uh, Control all delete <laughs> Tom Atkins out of this movie. <laughs> Throw his ass out the window. And then we get a doctor who's doing that shaky scotch hand. It's just like, get out of here. I did what I had to do. And it that's weird? it. And then for the rest of the movie, it's like, we don't need any more facts. We just need I gotta say, opponents. It's also peculiar to me when um, Richard Roundtree shows up in movies of so this weird. era as anything other than like Shaft. It's like, weird to see him as like the the kind of suit he commish, be, stuck yeah. behind the desk, shackled by the bureaucracy, shackled by bureaucracy, like totally in on like murdering super cop, like yeah. weird. Yeah. It doesn't make a lot of sense because I'm like, wait, is this supposed to be like the juxtaposition because Shaft is awesome and this guy like <laughs> and now Richard, Ra- yeah, he's just sitting like, there like just celebrating St. Patty's Day, telling uh, your wife jokes. Yeah, well, really, everyone's like, getting murdered. It's like that's not Richard. That's not my Richard. Here's the other, like Richard Round. It's like, are we doing this because like I'm like, first off, Shaft was actually a good cop. Um, Matthew Cordell is just like a fucking psychopath who just killed people because yeah. he's like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Richard yeah. Round, she's not a maniac justice. cop, just a shitty cop. He's a just shitty a shit cop. cop. Yeah. You can't call you can't call a movie shitty cop and get it, and get it, and get it. Well, made. that's it's the thing. Shitty cop, cop could evoke so many storylines, right? Uh, like most, too many. like Kindergarten Cop could have been called Shitty Cop. Like, there's a lot of cop movies that you could have had that as the title. Maniac Cop is what we got. Well, Maniac Cop describes how bad this cop is at being a cop. You're like, he is a psychopath. He literally came back from the dead. He came to back keep just to keep killing yeah. innocent people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Bruce God, Campbell dude. is he's a nice kind of breath of fresh air. He also, in a weird way, he he still does his kind of evil dead bit at times, like when he's in the back of the truck, like, whoa. But he sells weirdly, it. it's a movie that, no, like, this isn't, William Lustig also mo- made the movie Maniac, which is, like, one of those great fucking underground, like, you know, video nasties. Right. You couldn't have Bruce Campbell in that. This movie knows it's more fun than that. 
So it's okay that Bruce Campbell's hamming it up a little bit. Like, even the appearance of Ted Raimi as the news anchor, you're like, all right, this is a movie that knows it's also, like, having a little fun. And I think that's another thing that I I would imagine that Heath is is locked in on on this, is one of the things when we're making stuff, we want it to be horror, we want it to be gross, but we want it to be fucking fun, man. You want to send people out enjoying it, so they want to watch the next one. And Maniac Cop, on its surface, feels like more of a grimy kind of exploitative movie. It always is hyper aware of where the fun is in the film. Yeah. It never detours off of that too far. There's never a time where I think that, like, there's good. There's never a time where I think it's, especially now, like in 2024, you're expecting a movie called Maniac Cop to, like, oh, this is probably going to say something about the state. Well, right. This isn't like a real indictment of the, like, like, police state and, you know, racial relations and all that. This is the, I'm like, uh, Larry Cohen, the guy who wrote Q, the winged serpent. Yeah, I'm sure he has a lot to say. So the talent behind this movie. I have no problem with Larry Cohen. I'm just saying. Larry Cohen, William Lustig. Lloyd Kaufman and them distributed it, right, at Troma. So you're like, you have, like, real underground kind of grimy horror royalty. And then the cast is fucking stacked. Yeah. Like, you can see all the stars aligning for this movie. And, again, I think the script, while, again, I don't think the mystery does a lot, it does help shuffle us from place to place. It just gives them things to do in that, again, very fucking brisk sub-90-minute runtime that we've got. Um, I think the script is really good. Like, I think there's a lot of good fun. elements in this. There's good, like, like you just crude. see it. You're like, where's the flaw in this movie? And it's like, it's fucking strong across the yeah. board. The kills there's are fucking good. good. It's horror. got a little mythology. There's like, good, mo- like, this movie horror is, like, slasher, built to succeed. Who done it? Machinations. Like, and it's, it's just enough to keep you flavored. Like, without you going, like, wait, I figure this out literally after the first, like, four minutes of the movie. I'm like, that's fine. The yeah. movie knows. Well, they cast did. Bruce Campbell because he also had a big chin, but you're not, not a Robert Zadar not, chin. It was Robert Zadar. And also Robert Zadar, has, as you saw in the shower, that dude was a fucking beefcake. Yeah. He had Bruce like a Campbell medical. Bruce Campbell is still looking a little, uh, a little weenie in this one. Bruce Campbell is still looking like first evil dead. Bruce Campbell, like yeah. Robert Zadar had like a medical condition, which is why his jaw looked like that. Yeah. And that's it, what I mean. So you're pretty much immediate. Like, no, but the, I yeah. think this is like, again, this is a cool thing about the movie is the movie never assumes that you're dumb enough to think that Bruce Campbell maybe did what this. What I think maybe, so I maybe the a generous read on this is that it's showing us again how bad the police are at doing their job and how fast they are to fall on that guy so that they don't That's have what to I think. face. This is like the anything. only social commentary that I think Larry Cohen even injects into this. And it's real brief is that. Cops are not willing to turn in other cops unless they're like Matthew Cordell, who's just like trigger happy. Weirdo. Well, even then, we're you like, could tell cool. the other cops didn't want to turn him in. The city hall right. came in over the top and said, "Like we're taking him." Right. Like you this get the like, sense that well, it's like everyone it's else would have covered it up on. for him. Right. It's an easy guy to pin it on. You know. I I think that. But see, that's the thing. So they wanted to save him, but they're w- really willing to throw Bruce Campbell into the fucking jaws of the lion, as it were. I think that there's... Uh, But see, you know what? On the commentary thing, there's a a dramatically important scene in the middle of this movie that I always feel like I forget because it's not maniac cop enough. But it's when Tom Atkins goes to the news lady and he's like, I could count on you to sensationalize this. uh." Oh, where she like gives the And that scene of the lady in her car broken down, the cop pulls up. Yeah, yeah. She's fucking scared. And the cop like reaches in and taps on the window and she just goes, you won't get me. And fucking (laughs) wastes it. yeah through the windshield mm-hmm. and we just see this like young looking child like not it, this kid who they cast does not look like a cop he's a he's actually that guy that dude is a character actor who's a cop in like everything which is weird because he is the one person in the movie i was like he doesn't look like a cop at all i right? know but he is like he ends up he is a cop and like he looks like a teenage boy cosplaying dolph lundgren's he-man <laughs> that's what he looks like to me <laughs> in my memory now but I think that scene, like, that's a scene, and this is one of those things we always talk about with horror movies, like, you get, the, like, one of the most annoying conversations in horror movies, right? Is it actually scary? It's impossible to quantify. It's different for everyone. This is a scene of, like, true terror. Like, this is a great horror movie scene. But it's also so effective because that's a fear that 
a lot of people, a lot of people seeing any police officer walk up to their car immediately are in a fucking state of panic and fear and you don't know how it's going to go. And I would imagine that a lot of people who are police officers or have police officers in their family also relate to the fear of, oh my God, there's my, my family member going out to do the right thing. And they're just always in the place where something bad could happen and they get fucking shot in the line of duty. It's one of those, it's just this beautiful, deep, deep vat of like real primordial fear. Sure. And that scene being in the middle of this ride, it's kind of like one of the few moments where we kind of detour to see what the greater yeah, it's, ramifications the of this journey ramifications can be. and effect are. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because we don't see any other like grieving family members. We don't see any protest. I like think, it lets you know, like this shit just happens so often, it doesn't yeah, matter. I that think, one scene, though, is so valuable in the middle of this movie. I agree. I think that that is what Larry Cohen does better than He's some such other a good writers writer. of his He's ilk. Between him and William Lustig, writer. they knew like we have to address this at least once. It doesn't have to be like an echo over the rest of the movie, but I do think that it's an important. Like, I I appreciate that. Like, you have to at least address. Because New York is a huge, sprawling metropolis, but everyone has the same, like, M.O. sometimes. Right. So you've got to address the fact that everyone is affected by the news. Well, also, it's just scary to do this kind of job in America where weird old ladies just have guns. Absolutely. You know, like, I do love that the movie, it kind of keeps everything wide open. It's just like, this is a a a shitty Thunderdome for all of these people to find themselves in. <laughs> like, there's just a lot of fear and not good shit everywhere you turn in this movie. Yeah. But it's still fun and it's fucking grimy. And I, I don't know, man. I just, I love this movie. Like, and I think that's the thing is you're, you're trying to capture, like, you come up with a title like Maniac Cop, right? You're like, fuck, we got to write that movie. That'll sell. The journey from that title to get to a movie this good is long and arduous and hard, man. They just kept making the right choice, it feels like, at every turn. And I think this movie soars above a lot of its kind of, you know, contemporaries. I think it's just doing the little things better more often than a lot mm -hmm. of other movies it's up against. And again, when you have, you know, Bill Lustig and, and Larry Cohen at the kind of forefront, and they just get this great fucking, like, character actor cast, like, this is what happens, man. This is fucking movie magic. It's truly wonderful. Get ready for my movie, uh, Maniac Grocer. Maybe. It's checkout forever. Oh, my God. See, but I bet you that movie exists somewhere. Absolutely. Maniac Every Should Job probably exists. Maniac somewhere. Every Job I think would work really well. I like the idea of the, mundane, the mundanity being maniacs, like grocers and stuff like that. But yeah. I do. Look, for a first time viewing, Maniac Cop truly is like, I, I was not expecting much. I was expecting an exploitation movie that was just like, oh, I get it. It's like one of those schlock fests that was fun. There was a lot of entertainment value worth watching. Like, not just because, like, we do this show and we have a lot of these things. There's, like, things worth watching in this movie that are, like, fun little things to, like, tuck away as something. Oh, you know what's funny? I saw that. I saw this thing happen in uh, Maniac Cop one time. So we all, oh, yeah. like, I think a lot of... I think a lot of movies of this ilk like are I would say like the example I always give is like you know when you watch those like 4 hour documentaries like in search of in search of darkness you're like oh I've seen that movie oh that was a cool oh, scene Oh this would make like the gnarliest in search of darkness clip like I got to see that Yeah like but there's always those things it's you probably tuck in away one of those there's three or four I'm of those sure now. I'm almost positive yeah. it's in one of them <laughs> But like you can always tuck away those things and again like I like these kinds of movies because it's part of your film lexicon. It's part of the overall like thing of movies you've watched where you just know you've seen something wild like this before. And I, I, I think maniac cop does such a good job for especially our generation of being just one of those wild fucking movies. You see, it's like, dude, have you seen maniac cop? What a fucking trip, man. Like I love that. That's what this movie really is at its heart. And I think that's what makes it special. And yeah, it's like it's a, a, a rocket ship six pack movie. That's what I always would call it—a six pack movie. You turn it on. By the time you're done with your six pack, the movie's over. You've had a great ride. You're laughing. You're a little drunk. Um, you know, it's like the perfect Friday night six pack. Perfect movie. buzz. And here's the thing: you you think about 
like the scene, right? Like where they are in the interrogation room, they come out and the dead bodies are staged everywhere and they're kind of running through mayhem. And Tom Atkins is getting whipped by an old lady and then thrown out a window. Like there, there is such a vibrance and energy and there's really great imagery. And it's, it's, right. it's a movie that so goes beyond just the cheap kind of exploitative horror film that it seems like it will be. So I think this I movie vastly overachieves. I would imagine that that's why me and Heath both love it so much. And it's this North star of like, you have these things you have to do from a business perspective, but you still want it to fucking sing, man. You want it to be art like this. Um, and so I'm guessing that's why Heath would say this one, man, this is kind of a real North star movie to guys like us who want to make really fun, memorable, um, you know, amazing Friday night, six pack movies. Like this is one of the best of that ilk. Maybe someday, we will make a movie worthy of Maniac Cop. Maybe someday. We can hope. All right, that's it for Maniac Cop. Thank you to my friend, brother, co-host. Co-host, co-creator. You're my co-host. He's I'm my co-creator. Co-host. Heath but Benfield. I can see that that's how that's going. That's fine. Yeah. Thank you, Heath, for the gift. Thank, Thank you, Heath. Alex, for gathering said gift. That's what I'm here Thank for. you all for kneeling before me for the entire month when the universe... Birth forward from its meaty womb. I'm I'm actually Me. I no this the the lineup we have this month is fucking wild and I think it's, it's actually a bizarre really lineup fun. but good. I mean I think it's like there's three that are real like in Griffey's wheelhouse and then there's the one outlier which is the next episode. For yeah, my your mom. mom came out of nowhere. My mom Donna Dandino. I told my mom I was like, hey, I need you to gift Griffey a movie. And she listed two movies. I'm like, uh, we've already done both of those. And she's like, well, what do you want? I was like, give me, give him some, give him some chicken soup for the soul. Give him oh something God. sweet. And she came back with the Rosalind Russell musical film Gypsy. Gypsy <laughs> from what? 1968 Gypsy. No, 1968, which is well, I, Donna knows I, that if there's one thing I love, it's a musical. My, so this yeah, is she, Donna knows you love a good musical, but she also knows that she love a good musical about. Stage mothers who turn their children into strippers. So, well, I mean, she's on the right path. Like, you know, this is like when you're <laughs> mad at Christmas because you would get like sw- a sweater. Yeah, but you're like, but it might be dope. It might help it might me get good, laid. I don't know. It might be a good. Sweater. I don't know. I I, I don't yeah. think it's going to be that good a sweater. But it's well, uh, you know, like the book Chicken Soup for the Soul, which every aunt and uncle had on the back of their shitter for years, gathering dust okay, and fecal of course, matter. Of yep. Um, you know, we'll hope that this is better. I'm actually am, excited. It's a movie I've never seen. I, I like excited. going into new cinematic adventures. It will be entertaining to see how this worked for you. The but question way, is, will it make my top 10 favorite uh, first time watches of the year? It might. You never know. Maybe Donna's giving me the greatest gift. Donna does have that habit. So yeah. We'll so we have two more wonderful movies this month, both from Dan Dino's. Uh, yep. It's awesome. I love the birthday month. Go over to patreon.com slash pod to see the commentary and the bonus episode this month. We'll be back to mini seriesing shortly. We might already be back to mini seriesing by the time you hear this. We record out of sequence a lot. Ooh. So, great time to check out uh, patreon.com slash pod the YouTube film alchemist. The email filmalchemistpod at gmail.com. You can find Film Alchemist on all the socials you're on where you can share and follow, especially TikTok. We would appreciate the support there. Make sure you go to misfitparade.net to check out the movies we're doing and see if Sugar Tits is coming to a theater near you. Also, yeah. make sure to go to Looper on any of their social media channels or their giant YouTube. And uh, make sure you watch the stuff that I'm doing with them over there. Support that. Help that grow. I would appreciate it. More than anything, man, thanks for giving your time to the Film Alchemist pod. I'm Josh Griffey. I'm Alex Dandino.